Hi everyone, my name is Steven, and today I'll be presenting a multi-threaded relay architecture for the Tor Anonymity Network. This work was done while I was a student at the University of Waterloo, and I'm currently a software developer at Georgetown University, working on the Shadow Network Simulator, which is used for Tor experimentation. The Tor network is a privacy and anonymity network designed for low-latency internet applications like web browsing. The network is made up of over 6,500 volunteer-run relays around the world, with an estimated 8 million active daily users. The most common way of accessing the Tor network is to use the Tor browser, but the Tor client itself has a SOX proxy that you can use to anonymize any TCP connection. While the network already has many users, it should be able to grow to support even more, and should have the network capacity to support this additional traffic. The simplest way to add network capacity is just to add more relays to the network, but this increases the size of the network's directory documents, causing large storage requirements for clients and quadratic growth in network communication overhead between relays. There have been a few proposed network designs that allow the network to support more relays without these drawbacks, but network architecture changes are very difficult to deploy on a community-run network like Tor. In this work, we take the approach of improving the internal relay architecture to support higher network throughput, which doesn't require a coordinated deployment and is complementary to these other approaches. When relays aren't limited by network bottlenecks or configuration options, they can be CPU constrained because of Tor's heavy processing requirements. Tor relays require a lot of network data processing, which includes multiple layers of AES encryption, connection scheduling, and more. Tor's current relay architecture doesn't easily adapt to multi-threading, so this work presents a multi-threaded architecture which preserves compatibility with the existing Tor network and parallelizes the end-to-end -end flow of network data. We also present a relay implementation built on top of Tor's existing code base, which implements a subset of our multi-threaded architecture, and we provide a performance evaluation of this proof-of-concept implementation. When a client running a Tor proxy connects to the Tor network, it builds multi-hop circuits through relays on the network. As Tor usually uses three hop circuits, the relays are named the entry, middle, and exit relay, given by their position in the circuit. The Tor proxy uses these circuits to tunnel anonymous TCP streams to servers outside of the Tor network. When using Tor, the client's IP address is hidden from the destination server, and no individual relay is able to link the client to the destination. Tor processes communicate by sending cells across TLS-encrypted connections. There are different cell types for different purposes, such as building circuits, establishing connections, relaying data, and more. A relay needs to be able to handle most of these cell types, so relays do much more than just forward TCP data. Since our multi-threaded design is heavily influenced by Tor's existing relay design, we'll give a quick overview of the routing aspect of Tor relays. Here we have a Tor relay. The relay has many relay connections, which are connections to other relays and clients, and edge connections, which are connections to servers outside of the Tor network. These TCP connections all have incoming and outgoing socket buffers. For each circuit that passes through the relay, Tor uses circuit cell queues to link the client-facing connection with the destination-facing connection. Tor multiplexes multiple circuits over a single relay connection and can have thousands of active circuits at a time. Relays must receive data on one connection, determine which circuit, and possibly which stream within that circuit it belongs to, process it, and then send it out on another connection. Not shown in the previous diagram is Tor's connection scheduler, which runs periodically and chooses the highest priority connections and circuits to send data from. This scheduler has global knowledge about every connection and circuit in the relay, and is important for fairly distributing the relay's bandwidth capacity among circuits. There are many other relay components that we're not going to discuss today, but are important to the design of the relay. A multi-threaded architecture should also consider these other components, and we discuss these a bit more in our paper. One important aspect of Tor's current relay design is its use of multi-threading. Tor relays use a thread pool and work queue for tasks such as extending circuits and processing Tor's network consensus documents, but importantly, they don't parallelize the routing of cells in the relay. So this routing of cells is what we aim to parallelize in this work, and leads us to our multi-threaded relay design. We aim to preserve compatibility with the existing Tor network. Relays using our multi-threaded design should be drop-in replacements for existing relays. Our multi-threaded architecture should parallelize the end-to-end -end flow of relayed cells and maintain some similarity with Tor's existing architecture in order to increase the amount of code that we could reuse in its implementation. 
We considered two different approaches to meet these three goals. The first was to offload expensive parts of the cell processing into individual tasks that could be processed by Tor's thread pool. But this approach would offer limited scalability, since some expensive operations, such as connection scheduling, don't translate easily to a work queue design, and there isn't a straightforward set of expensive operations that could be parallelized. The second approach was to run multiple Tor relays on the same server, for example, one per CPU core. But this approach has the same drawbacks as adding more relays to the network, and it limits the relay's ability to load balanced connections across CPU cores. This would also require relaxing Tor's civil attack defenses. In Tor's current architecture, the relationship between connections and circuits looks like this. Each circuit can be linked to a forward and backward relay connection and to many edge connections. Circuit and connection objects hold circular references to each other, which makes it difficult to distribute these objects across threads. Instead, we need to remove these circular references and allow for asynchronous communication between these objects. To do this, we split the circuit object up into two new types of circuit objects, a circuit half for relay connections and a circuit edge for edge connections. These halves operate independently and communicate over thread-safe channels that can work with Tor's event loop. Since Tor circuits are stateful, we need to split the circuit object state between these new circuit halves. One of the most important parts of the circuit state is the key is used to encrypt or decrypt cells as they pass through each hop of the circuit. These session keys should be stored in the circuit half closest to the circuit's origin. The diagrams here show where the session keys are stored in three different scenarios. The third diagram shows an example of Tor's Onion services. Onion services are anonymous servers where both a client and a server create their own anonymous circuits to a relay called the rendezvous relay. Their circuits are linked together so that cells leaving one circuit are redirected to the other. Our circuit half design works nicely with circuits at these rendezvous points. We use the relay's main thread to run the relay controller, which manages the global state of the relay. Other threads are referred to as connection threads and run connection managers. Connections to the relay, along with any circuit halves which belong to those connections, are distributed among these thread-specific connection managers. Every thread runs its own event loop and connection scheduler. For example, here we have three connection threads, each with their own connection manager. Network data, which arrives on one connection, is passed to its circuit half, travels across a thread-safe channel to its paired circuit half, which possibly could be in another thread, and can later be sent in that circuit half's connection. The relay controller, running on the main thread, communicates with each connection manager in order to provide the global state needed for creating new connections and circuits and more. Tor's primary connection scheduler is the KISS scheduler, which attempts to minimize the amount of data in the kernel's outgoing socket queues. This scheduler writes to the sockets immediately within the scheduling loop and maintains a global priority list of all connections. In order to parallelize the relay scheduling, we just run multiple schedulers, one on each thread. Connection priority becomes local between connections belonging to the same thread rather than global across all connections, but in practice this shouldn't have much of an impact on the relay's performance, since scheduling fairness doesn't need to be perfect across all connections. To investigate the performance of our multi-threaded design, we developed an implementation as a modified version of Tor's existing code base. We didn't implement the entire architecture, but rather parallelized only two primary components, the socket communication and the TLS processing. Our experiments were designed to evaluate our multi-threaded relay by measuring the throughput of the relay while under heavy CPU load. These experiments were not designed to model real-world Tor network traffic but rather to provide a simple model for comparing specific aspects of the relay's performance. In order to saturate the relay, Tor clients on our experimental Tor network built hundreds of circuits through a single target relay and simultaneously sent data through these circuits to a server. We ran all of the relay, proxy, client, and server processes on a single computer, which we'll call the control server, except for the target relay, which ran on its own computer. All streams transfer the same amount of data and started at the same time. We ran experiments with our target relay on two different servers, an Intel-based server and a Raspberry Pi. These servers show the performance of the implementation on very different hardware. The control server, which ran all of the other client and Tor processes, had much better hardware in order to ensure we could saturate the target relay. We measured the target relay's 30-second maximum sustained throughput for each server 
and found significant performance improvements when using multiple threads. Our multi-threaded implementation with only a single thread had similar performance to vanilla Tor, and as we added connection threads to handle the socket communication, we found that the throughput improved significantly. Since the Raspberry Pi uses Ethernet over USB 2, the multi-threaded relay with two or three threads reached the throughput limit of its network interface. It's likely that we'd see even better performance on newer Raspberry Pis that use regular gigabit Ethernet. We also measured the time to last byte for each stream, which is the time required to complete each transfer. And as expected from the higher throughput, we found that the streams completed much faster when using the multi-threaded relay as the target relay. In each configuration, all streams completed around the same time, showing that our implementation didn't cause unexpected effects in circuit prioritization during our experiments. This multi-threaded implementation and experiments have some important limitations. The multi-threaded implementation parallelizes only specific parts of our architecture, and some elements are missing, but it already demonstrates a significant performance improvement for a multi-threaded relay on both limited and high-performance hardware. It's likely that implementing more parts of the architecture would lead to better scaling over more CPU cores, as our implementation does not fully parallelize the end-to-end -end processing of cells from the multi-threaded design. Also, our experimental design is meant to demonstrate the feasibility of the architecture, and not to attempt to model a real-world Tor network. In practice, a multi-threaded relay may not scale as well as it did in our experiments. Today, we presented a multi-threaded relay architecture for Tor, and demonstrated the potential relay performance improvements of this architecture. As we only make internal relay changes, and not network architecture changes, an implementation of our multi-threaded design would be easy to deploy. The Tor project is currently in the process of developing a Tor client in the Rust programming language, and this code base may also be used for relays in the future. This migration to a new code base is a good time to consider this multi-threaded design. Finally, our results showed that the multi-threaded design works well on both typical server hardware and small single board computers, and even inexpensive hardware like the Raspberry Pi has the potential to be useful on the network. If you have any questions, feel free to send an email, and thanks for listening.